Well, welcome back to the homestead. Today's episode, I want to talk to you about water. So, uh, out here where I'm building the, the house at, I actually have the opportunity to get onto community water if I want it. Uh, but there's a, a water main that would be up at the road, and I would have to uh, trench from the house out to the road, which is about 1,500 feet, and uh, that's going to cost quite a bit of money to get a trench dug through our ground because we have a lot of rock out here. You're not going to rent a small walk-behind trencher and, and put this water line down. You're going to have to take a mini excavator and, and dig the trench and then come back and refill it, and it's full of rock. And quite frankly, there's not really a clear line uh, from the house to the road, so you're going to have to go through some woods, you're going to have to clear some trees out and all that kind of stuff. And you've got 1,500 feet of water line that you have to maintain in the future. Anytime there's damage to that water line, it's your responsibility. And any water that comes out during that time, you have to pay for. So rather than doing that and having to pay a, a recurring bill month after month for the rest of my life, I, I feel much more comfortable going uh, with a well on the homestead. So once you pay to have the well drilled, uh, you know, your monthly bill is, is pretty much non-existent. You have to pay for a little bit of electricity to run the pump, and that's it. Uh, now, granted, anything that goes wrong with the well is your responsibility, you know, just like the, the water line running up to the road. So if the pump goes out or if the well goes dry or anything like that, then that's something that I would have to deal with. But I've, I've worked on these wells before. I've replaced pumps before, and... All of that is, is fairly simple and straightforward to do. And I feel pretty comfortable that I can maintain one of these wells and maintain the water supply to my house much better with this well than I can with the community water service. If the community water gets contaminated, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but this well is here on my place. I've got control over it and I'm, I'm much more comfortable with that. Plus if this well goes dry, I actually have a second well on the property. It's just not near my house that I can draw from. So I feel pretty confident that, that we're, we're covered for water. So anyway, we, we had the drilling service come out and put this well down this morning. Uh, they originally had me scheduled for the end of September and then they, they called me the other day and said, hey, we can move you up uh, about 60 days. So they, they came out today to do it before they uh, took their rig over to another state to, to do some work. So we were pretty fortunate in that. So we, we got our well 60 days earlier than we anticipated getting it. And when they came out and set up this morning, they started drilling at about nine o'clock and they were gone at 11. So it was a very quick process to get it put down. Uh, so let me show you some footage of them actually drilling the well. And at the end of that, I'll give you some of the specifics on how deep the well is and how much it costs and all that sort of stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and roll some of the footage for, for them drilling.
right, so <clears throat> that's a, a little bit of footage of them actually drilling the well down. And now I want to kind of give you the specs on the well. So when I got here this morning, the well truck was just ahead of me. So by the time I was getting my camera and all out, uh, they had already done a little bit of their prep work. So the way that we determined where this tank was going to be is I told them the general area that I was hoping to get the well put in. And uh, the guy that drilled the well got out some dowsing rods, which is just a metal rod with a bend in it. And you hold them loosely in your hands. And as you walk, uh, whenever you cross over an uh, underground vein of water, supposedly the, the rods cross and that tells you where the vein is. So I know there's a lot of controversy on it. I know a lot of people don't believe in it and a lot of people do. I'm not here to tell you whether it's, it's real or not and debate the science behind it. But at any rate, the drilling service uses that technique to determine where they're gonna drill. And he marked uh, this spot out. He crossed over that same area three different times uh, from different directions. Every time he crossed there, he hit water. So, or his dowsing rods crossed. So uh, that's where we drilled and we hit water there at 30 feet, 50 feet, and 80 feet. So uh, whether the dowsing rods work or whether it was coincidence, I don't know, don't really care because we have water. That, that was my goal is to get, get a well down into a good flow of water. And we did that. So the reason that we didn't stop at like 30 feet is as you go down, uh, you hit water at 30 feet and it was, uh, I don't know, it, it was maybe eight to 10 gallons per minute. So it wasn't really a large volume of water and it wasn't very deep. So that underground stream has potential to fluctuate. So he went down uh, deeper than that and he got to 50 feet and it came up to a flow of about uh, 12 to 15 gallons per minute and we were hoping for 20. So he continued going down from 50 feet and once he got to like 79 feet, uh, he hit water again. So his, his drill stem only went to 80 feet and at 80 feet, we were getting 20 gallons per minute like we wanted. So we went ahead and loaded another stem and went down 20 feet past that because we didn't want the pump uh, sitting right at the bottom of the well and in the, the flow of water and then have the, uh, the well start to silt in over time. You know, uh, sediments get in there and it, it gradually fills up. Uh, and if we filled up at all, we would have to pull the pump up and then be out of the flow of water at that point. So we went ahead and drilled another 20 feet. So I've got 20 feet of well below the last flow of water and then I can get 20 feet of silt in this well and still have my pump pulled up to get that last uh, flow of water and hit 20 gallons per minute. So this well should last a good long time uh, from all the indications we have right now. And the, the grand total for having this well put down uh, came in at $3,853.90. So that's a big chunk of change uh, to come up with all at one time, <clears throat> but I never have a water bill. So, you know, typically your water bill is between 30 and $50 a month, and then uh, that's for the rest of your life. So, you know, in 10 or 11 years, this, this well has paid for itself. Anything it gets beyond that is just gravy. Now, 10 or 11 years, that might be a long time to get a return on investment, but that's not the only reason that I chose this well versus hooking onto the community water. Uh, if I hooked onto community water, the water main is about 1,500 feet from the house. So I have to trench 1,500 feet from the house out to the water main, and the water main is where my meter is gonna be. That means any breakages or leaks and that 1,500 feet of water, or 1,500 feet of line, is my responsibility. And I know people who have had these long lines to hook up to community water. <clears throat> they have a, a, a hard freeze or a tree falls or something, and there's a break in their line. And they still get water pressure to the house because the break is not complete, but it leaks. 
and you don't see the leak and you don't know about it and you're leaking water for a month at a time before you know it because you don't get an indication until your next bill and you get a thousand dollar water bill so <clears throat> i'm not a big fan of uh getting a surprise like that in my monthly budget plus i don't want to have to worry about maintaining that 1500 feet of line that for me is going to go through woods and uh through a ravine and everything else uh, it just doesn't make sense in my setup for that. Plus, I prefer well water to community water in the first place. So we went with the well. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to pay almost $4,000 to get that well. And then the only bill that I expect to have for the next several years is the little bit of electricity that it takes to run it. Then if I have a pump that goes bad, I may have uh, a three or $400 pump that I have to buy and put down but it's still not a thousand dollars and I'm in control of it. In addition, uh, I know it's, it's a little more risky to have your own well and have to maintain it versus having a, a municipality that's maintaining the water supply. Uh, but quite frankly, this is not the only well that I have on my place. I also have another well that's only a couple of hundred feet from here, but uh, it's not plumbed over to the house. So if this well goes bad, there is another well here on the place. I do have the opportunity to get water from somewhere other than this well in an emergency. Plus, I've maintained wells in the past. They're really not that complicated and they're pretty reliable. So all in all, I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, the well. I'm comfortable with the decision to do it. And quite frankly, I'm tickled that this particular well came in a little bit under what I had budgeted because I was actually expecting to have to go down about 140 feet which is what the other well on my place went down to. So I have one well that's sitting at 140 feet, and then I have this well that's sitting at 100 feet. And uh, I, think, I think our water supply is pretty well covered now for the homestead. So at any rate, uh, like I said, it's a 100 foot well. It cost me $3,853, and it only took them two hours to put it down. And uh, I'm, I'm tickled to death with it. So. That, that's probably going to be it for today. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to hook this up to the house today because I've also got a propane tank that's going to be over in this area and I have to dig a ditch for it. I have to dig a ditch for the water line and the electrical line for the well. And I've got another ditch that I need to dig on the other side of the house for a uh, uh, internet antenna tower that I'm going to put in. And I'm also going to mount a uh, cellular antenna on it. So I need a conduit in for that tower. So I'm going to try and get all the three of those projects lined out for the same time. And that way I can rent a mini excavator, dig all three ditches at one time, get it knocked out in a weekend. I don't have to continually re-rent that, that equipment to do my ditch with. So that's going to be it for today. And until next time, y'all just keep checking back.